right. As it turns out. There we go. We are lined up on YouTube, and that should be coming out is that, momentarily. Uh, there it is. You are live. Sweet. All, All right. right. So you can see our ugly faces if you dial into the YouTube, but it's about five to six seconds behind real time. Yeah. Oh, that's so gonna you want to turn off. I'm your, not even gonna mess with that. Yeah, you'll you'll want to like mute it. But yeah, you can see some of our reactions, but they'll happen way after you say what you say. Right. <laughs> Got it. Got it. It's all good. Let's see. What does YouTube want from me now? They, I have so many pop ups on YouTube. It's like unsupported resolution. Well, I don't need super high def on me and Sherwin. <laughs> Maybe our, you know, our guests are always pretty, but uh, I don't. I don't need people to see every blemish. And then here's one. Uh, they want me to go to this other control room, and now they're wanting me to. Say whether this is a kid's show. No, it is not a kid's show. <laughs> like, it's a whole mess. Oh, that's, that, that's some dangerous territory there if we get into that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Apparently there was some legislation where you have to now d declare yourself as kid's show or not. And I, I don't know what the deal is. So uh, I, I just hit no. I'm like, no, no, we don't. We no, don't discourage no. kids from coming, but we're not a kid's show. How about that? <laughs> you know? That's right. That's um, right. So. No animated fun time here, kids. Move right, along. Right. <laughs> well, you know, see. one thing we've discovered with NASCAR fans, and you probably know this already, Jay, is that, um, you know, most NASCAR fans, they cuss, <laughs> as it turns out. I yeah. have never heard a NASCAR fan cuss. <laughs> Sir. Never. They are saints. Yeah. Well, they, and are, they are wondrous people, and they never use the Lord's name in vain. Well, the, there's two of those three that are right. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's probably not a whole lot of them, that, if, at least from the South, that use GD. <laughs> That's true. Are, That's can... true. Although, uh, one of my best moments uh, is is uh, one of my best cussing moments that I heard was when I was at Talladega one time and I was doing a story. And I'm going to use one of my uh, even use one of my cusses here. I was doing a story uh, on on Dale Jr. and the fans and their reactions to him. And uh, I was walking around the infield of Talladega, which is in itself, you know, a, a minefield. And there's this lady up there on, on top of her rig wearing a Dale Jr. shirt. So I said, hey, can I come up and talk to you? And then and she uh, and she says, sure, come on up. And so I talked to her for a while. And she her, her first of all, her main uh, her main consensus back this back like in 2009, 2010, when Junior wasn't doing well. Her main consensus was that Junior just needs a good doing. <laughs> and I think she was the one that was going to do the doing, but, uh, you know, obviously that did not work out. She this was not his. Volunteered his to, program. she was yeah. the hand she. Take one for the team. <laughs> Some guy down from down below starts yelling and going, what's going on up there? She goes, I'm talking to Yahoo Sports, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> And I have used that as, you know, as, as a tagline ever since I'm Yahoo sports, bitch. And I wish that I had that recorded because it was just, it was beautiful. I that, made that is my awesome. Show. What a story. That's fantastic. And, and there's not a person who's ever been to a NASCAR race or especially Talladega who doubts for one second that that line for line is exactly what happened oh, man. and I mean, possibly you know, we, surprised we can go wherever you want to go if you, guys, if you guys want to talk talladega i can I, we can all tell talladega stories all day <laughs> yeah. long but this is your show you guys you guys take us take us where you want oh man well well, well we, we might wander into that uh, territory yeah, we might need to write that in like delete a line that you didn't like and put that in <laughs> and then we'll talk that <laughs> oh man um so let's see we got roger we got beast a few other folks hanging out y'all say hey and uh, we got Jay on. We will start this thing up. Jay, um, since it's been a little while, uh, we may disappear for about 90 seconds, or it might even sound weird for about 90 seconds. Folks will be able to hear you. So, And like I said before, okay. I don't do any editing on this thing. So if you start going, hey, guys, I can't hear you. What's going on? That'll be no. part of the show. <laughs> Did you leave me behind? I'm yeah. so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, roll it, man. All good. So, yeah, we'll, uh, like I said, disappear for a little bit, and then uh, you'll hear us bring you on and all cool. that. So, Thank you. Awesome. Um, we ready to roll? Sherwin, you good? Yep. I'm all good. right. Jay, you ready? Absolutely. All right. Well, let me make sure I got all the things and all the buttons and all that. Looks like I do. Hit and record. We're recording now. <laughs> Whoa! 
welcome yo that's right this is a pregame engineer tugate mayor racing podcast episode number 230 it's monday february 10th 2020 i'm tugate mayor rusty wallace in the PTM Podcast Studio with pregame engineer Andrew Sherwin. What's up, dude? Right over here. Got a hometown boy with us today. That's right. I'm excited about it. Been off for a week, uh, so last week kind of crazy. We're back on the mic. We're ready to roll. We got all kinds of stuff to talk about. Daytona 500 coming up. Clash. Sherwin, we're going to talk some Clash. <laughs> Crash or yeah, Clash? Uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, there's a Freudian slip in there that could be exactly right. Before we get to all that, y'all know what the deal is. This podcast is sponsored by you. That's right. Go to Patreon.com. Forward slash PTM. Join the What's Drink Club for as little as one dollar a month. Get that free koozie. Best part is every cent this year. We're once again donating to sponsoring drivers. So join the PTM posse today. Be a part of the sport you love. This week's show brought to you by our official sponsors at that five dollar and up per month level. Here we go. Aaron Beard and Robert Kaplinger, Coleman Clam, Eric Kevin Ryan Keeper, Patrick Cleary, Jeff Brown, Brandon Crowell, Kathleen McDonald, Stacey Wright, Brandon Carl, Rico Porter, John Bob, Les Miller, Julie Bonzi, John Pearson, Eddie Greer, Third, Young Promoter Sports, David Mullins, Patrick Johnson, Brett Morris, Crystal Smoke, Fred Rosado, Chad Nappett, Stacey Coleman, Matthew Camper, Lisa Chinana, Rick Houston, Sarah and Barry, Evan Roller, and Mr. Brad Harrison has joined us uh, in that. All right. Yeah, yeah in that $5 and up per month level. Thank yeah, you, Brad. Brad was the first guy that got us access to uh, the infield at Atlanta. That's right. Yeah. So very cool to see uh, to see Brad stepping up in official sponsor. Love that. Um, we're ready to get going. Uh, we want to welcome onto the show Yahoo Sports senior writer, author of Earnhardt Nation and fellow ATLian, most importantly, Earning his PETM PhD tonight with his third appearance. He's on Twitter at Jay Busby. It's Yahoo Sports, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jay. Yahoo Sports, bitch. <laughs> yes, indeed. That is not. Like, I couldn't get it out. I'm not Yahoo Sports, bitch. This is a declaration, <laughs> this is a statement of purpose. Oh, man. Yahoo Jay was telling bitch. us a story in the pre show, y'all, of. Some woman at Talladega who um, yelled that out <laughs> uh, when when he was uh, what was it she was say that was, say that part again yeah I was I was interviewing people I mean just interviewing people in Talladega is always a dicey prospect to begin with but uh, <laughs> I was talking to people about uh, Dale Jr. and and she decided to uh, make known who she was talking to and why everyone else needed to leave her alone. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh man, I uh, love it. I wanted it to be more. <laughs> natural but I, I just couldn't get it out without laughing <laughs> uh jay you know how we start this thing what you drinking on tonight man i'm so freaking lame i've got a sprite here and sprite. not a sprite this lady I, I forgot i forgot man i forgot i was supposed to bring something badass i've got it <laughs> over in the uh the, the the rolling wet bar over there but uh but i'm just drinking a sprite tonight man you know i think this is a ptm first sure what do you got over there i uh did want to set a precedent today uh-huh. I am drinking water. <laughs> and sir, got to hydrate, man. A glass of ice cold water in my hand too. What have we become, well, I, Sherwin? I wanted to support Rusty in uh in in his, you know, mission and uh and I, I needed to be a part of that too, so Yeah, I yeah, have uh, Why not have some water? We, been... I, we're going to have we're going to get wild one day. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh there's plenty of time to get wild. I've been trying to lose a few of those LBs and uh so sort of over the last few podcasts been Having my giant glass of water, but uh, you know, like uh, like Jay said, we'll we'll bust out something badass <laughs> in not too long. But yeah, this might be uh, this is a PTM first or close to it. So you know what, y'all uh, y'all hang out with sober us and see how boring we can be. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in all three of us, man. We really we we all three of us. This is like this is like the bush clash where they did, they crashed before they even reached the damn starting line. I mean, we we all just completely turned ourselves into the wall. I'm surprised they didn't crash on pit row when they left. You know, <laughs> Why so. not? Why not? They crash the pace car, <laughs> crash everybody. Jay, this is usually when I thank everyone, uh, thank our esteemed guests for being on. But instead, I'm going to congratulate you on this PTM PhD. Uh, hey, it's right. well well earned and everything. A big pat on our backs. No, I'm not like that. But uh, but I am like this. Um, when we send you the the PhD certificate. Where in your bedroom are you going to hang it? Does it go like over the headboard so that everybody knows when you come in, or does it go like over the footboard so you can see it when when you're you know going to bed every night? Just you know which oh, one? Of yeah, those? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it right up there on the ceiling. You know, oh, right ceiling. There, so Perfect. Lay back. Just look at that certificate and be like, yeah, that's well earned. I, I think it definitely just took the place of your Master's of Fine Arts from Memphis. 
So <laughs> just well, replace I mean, you know, it and then. <laughs> the, the, the mirrors on the ceiling are a definite issue. You know, I'm going to have to cover those up. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it'll work. Yep. Make a little room for it. That's uh, That'll work. I'm, I'm digging it. Do you, uh, so, uh, I mean, I know, you know, uh, Rick Houston and everything. Last time we had Rick Houston on, he uh, was drinking a Pepsi. We told him we'd send him a Coke. And he said, I'll send it back. So oh, as, my God. I know, as a fellow <laughs> ATL oh, oh, uh, alum here, <laughs> we, we wanted to see if, you know, you could just have a talk with Rick at some point. Oh, just, man. I, just... Yeah, I need to. That's insane. <laughs> All right, so, guys, this is live. I'm going to show you how live this is. This is I am, I am at my house. My dog, who is barking up a storm here, wanting to go out. So do you mind if I take, like, one minute to just get rid of him so that we can have a, a pleasant conversation without him? Sure. We can do that. We can do that. No editing, nothing. This, this is how it works. That's so, yes, yeah. I will be right back. I'm tremendously sorry for this. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. Mind, so. You'll let Roscoe out. I love uh, – <laughs> hey, who, yeah, his name's name. Hawkeye, and I'm going to kick Hawkeye. Hawkeye. <laughs> right, don't report me or anything. All right. All right we, second one. So we're going to have to talk about that when you get back. Go ahead. Oh yeah, he's gone. I <laughs> uh, got the video up right there. That's uh, that's funny though. Um, yeah, the PhD <laughs> Rick Houston Sherwin. We I think we need to send a care package over to Rick. What do you think? Yeah, we absolutely do. Coke, and Coke the thing is, I'm pretty I'm sure. A, I think I'm wearing a Coke shirt under this. I'm pretty sure Jay is actually from Virginia. Ooh. But he's still a Coke guy. Well, he know. I mean, he's uh, he knows what's right. Yeah, yeah. He's he's up with that, Sherwin. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead, and I'm going to bring up the report card and get us started with the teardown. Right. Well, nope. See, I, everything's everything's a mess today. There it is. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> you know, I had a heck of a time trying to get this show started. <laughs> it was it was my normal time. Get uh, get up here, start writing some show notes around seven thirty or so, and turn on the computer, and it's like, nope, you can't have any of your microphone or or sounds or anything. You're not allowed. Nope. And you know, what do you do then? Yeah, you restart the computer. Nope, didn't work then. Plug in, unplug everything. Go crazy. Start pulling out your hair. Contemplate calling Sherwin saying, show's canceled. Go home. <laughs> like, I mean, Not every two day. weeks in a row. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, glad. Uh, luckily, I don't think I can call Brandon again and demand <laughs> attention. If you, uh, <laughs> if you missed last week, uh, so did I. <laughs> Uh, Sherwin was on the uh, Lap Traffic podcast with Brandon Crowd, so be sure to check that one out. Uh, we're ready to tear this thing down, and Sherwin, you know where we got to start. The Clash. Um, Speaking of tearing stuff down, <laughs> I mean, really, really tearing it down. Um, as the you know, as a quick recap, five cars on the lead lap at the end, triple overtime, thirteen extra laps, and Eric Jones comes across in one of the most beat-up cars you've ever seen. Uh, Pushed by a lap-down car. Right, of Denny Hamlin. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and there was like, I mean, five cars on the lead lap, but like six cars in the race, <laughs> including Denny. Like, Denny got, uh, I think Denny got sixth place by doing that. You know? Yes, he did. So, Jay, what were your, uh, what's your breakdown here? What's your thoughts on the old clash? Yeah, what the hell happened? I mean, that was what we, we were laughing about that. And, and, just literally everything seemed to to go wrong that could go wrong. Guys looked like they were not they'd completely forgotten how to how to drive the damn car over the over the winter break. And and so yeah, I mean I think that we'll talk obviously about Joey Logano. He's the big one, but but there were just there was so much blocking going on, there was so much poor spotting going on that it, it really did not seem like this was a this was your your top level of drivers that we come to expect. So Lisa Chinana, L at L L Chinana. Uh, and a uh, official sponsor asked us. Uh, there was multiple. Beast was asking us about it. Lisa asking us. She says, all but, what, one car will have to use backup cars or even second backup cars for 500. What in the world can we even expect out of? Well, uh, those aren't really backup cars for the Daytona 500, okay. as, as it turns out. Okay, so there's at least that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, bad. Uh, uh, bad. Uh, those are all last year's chassis. Like, ah, gotcha. Their, the, the, it would be their third backup if they destroyed one in the duel and then destroyed another one in practice. <laughs> before yeah, that's they happened would... a couple times too, hasn't it? Where, where guys just get completely shredded in practice and all of a sudden, yep, on the truck, bring out the backup. Well, Carl Edwards started a Daytona 500 in a fourth car that was actually Denny Hamlin's backup car. Uh, <laughs> so, like, that's, that's just how it goes. Like, they know what's going to happen in the Bush Clash. Um those cars aren't real cars. 
like not real cars in terms of running the 500. I got you. Okay. Um, Beast was asking us, uh, how much of the clash instances was due to the package and how much due to, as Brad said, dumb driving? Um, I think there is a, I don't know, 10% versus 90% on, on the uh, suede to the driving side. But, you know, I mean, they were talking about we got we to gotta be single file. And if we're not single file, then all hell breaks loose. Jay? Yeah, exactly. You know, you saw that, and and that's the tricky part is figuring out every time that they adjust the package, it's always this law of unintended consequences. You're never quite sure how it's going to react, uh, A, when you've got traffic around you, and B, when you've got a huge pack uh, that's that's going at high speeds at, at the level that you can hit at Daytona. That's just the physics involved there are so much more unpredictable than, than even in the best case scenario, and so that's why they keep tweaking the package, but uh and tweaking the package, by the way, it's, it, I mean, I'm sorry, we're already, <laughs> already getting nasty. I'm, I'm really sorry to get that dirty this early in the evening, but still, <laughs> uh, it's going to be, it, it's going to be fun to watch, but you know, I always kind of, there's always a sense of dread in the sense that you don't, A, you don't want a huge wreck and then B, you don't want just crappy racing. Yeah. I think one of the issues is that, that it, it is a short race. It doesn't pay well. And there's only one reason to be there. And that's to win. And I think that's why we see so much carnage, at least yeah. in the last half a decade. We've seen a tremendous amount of carnage in this race. So, you know, I, we ask the same thing every year. Fast forward to six days from now, Daytona 500. Um, should we expect to see this? What You know, in the Daytona 500, it's almost, it's weird to me. It's almost the same thing, though, right? Like, you're only really there to win it. It's It's hard to kind of place or, or or think about well i need to finish top 10 who knows what top 10 is going to be well it pays 250 grand just to start the thing yeah yeah that's that's what i was going to say is that you know there's there's such a it, it can keep a race team going for several months just from that one win there several weeks anyway so yeah just getting in the field is the key but that's always interesting to me is is the 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 level of quality between the front and the back because of that reason and somebody doing a hail mary pass and getting in on qualifying, you know, you never quite know a how qualified the driver is, and b how qualified the uh, the the or how how well set up the car is. Yeah, well, so one of the things that was really cool about qualifying was Brennan Gone because Brennan yeah. Gone always delivers in an interview, <laughs> and he he made it in on time. And he said, "I'm gonna have a bitching time this week." <laughs> it was like, "Oh, that went out on broadcast, Fox. All right, uh, yeah, rock have on, it. baby. Have at it." <laughs> Oh man! I mean, how much fun is that though? Seeing that kind of those kind of interviews, isn't that what we want? Is we don't the last thing that we want is for these guys to look like golfers up there, you know? Well, I want to thank the boys at the shop, and I want to thank sponsor A and sponsor B, and uh, we had a good week this week, and uh, it's on to Martinsville. Yeah, right. It a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, you had mentioned Joey, uh, so Brad Kozlowski pretty upset with you know teammate Joey uh, doing some blocking there, and then ended up with a, I mean, just ultra wrecked car, Jay. Yeah, yeah, that was a mess. Uh, and and poor Keselowski. I mean, he was just kind of wrong place, wrong time. That's always that's always the worst. I mean, I feel like the the, the guy that gets caught up in it. It's it. I always feel the worst for him because he had nothing to do with it, and he just happened to be minding his own business, and then boom, he gets taken out. But yeah, Logano was was blocking like a madman, and uh, and it finally caught up to him. I'm sitting here trying to think of how to put it where. I, you're you're both encouraged to block. You're you're kind of discouraged. Like, what's the right amount of block here? You know? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Is is do you do you block to the point that that you put yourself and and others in danger? Is there some kind of uh, point where you obviously think, all right, got to let him go? I mean, obviously, the classic case is Ryan Newman, or that guy will block yep. you if you're trying to get around him in the grocery store aisle. But uh, <laughs> you know, with other guys, there's a certain level of respect that they'll so let you all- go. It's a- <laughs> yeah well i think what we saw is you know we saw a hard block and then we saw a soft block and then unfortunately it, it almost looks like you know Logano got arrow loose in mm-hmm. addition and so you have to lift off the throttle right and and when everybody's pretty hard on the throttle not a hundred percent on the throttle but um then you create madness and that's what we saw yeah, yeah. madness 
No kidding. Um, we'll move on to second period. We've talked about Daytona 500 a little bit already, but Stenhouse on the pole, Bowman on the outside. Um, you know, last year, what was it? We had – how many races did we go for Chevy? It was five years in a row with Chevy with Hendrick on mm-hmm. the front row. Mm-hmm. And so uh, – and then how many races last year till Chevy won? It was – chase at talladega yeah but that was a little different because it was one of those weird overtime deals right we were there yep yep it wasn't just weird it was awesome yeah it was but, awesome <laughs> <laughs> but uh does this say anything about chevy or are we just asking the same question we've freaking asked a million times over the last half decade <laughs> what does it mean yeah, the, the thing with the pole at Daytona, it's one of those weird things where it always seems to to work with a with a storyline. And then I'm not quite sure mm-hmm. necessarily what the storyline is here, but you know, think about Danica getting the pole, Austin Dillon getting the pole, Junior getting the pole, you know, these these it always seems to work out in a way that makes people wonder uh, maybe is something being a little bit tweaked here. That's it gives the conspiracy theorists a lot of room to run. Now I'm not sure what conspiracy there is that puts Ricky Stenhouse on the pole position, but it's still out there. Well, the the conspiracy this year is that Ricky races with Kroger sponsorship and Kroger sponsored qualifying, oh, so everybody's freaking out about that. The, oh man, you figured it out. You cracked it. <laughs> there, there do there do seem to be some weird coincidences in all. The, I mean, just in in all this stuff. I I wouldn't now. You could probably blame coincidence on uh, or attribute to coincidence many things. Like, what if uh, uh, Jimmy had won the poll, you know. Oh well, of course he uh, gets to win the yeah, poll in his last year. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it seems like well, almost, that's how you know that it's it's BS. Is right? that <laughs> is it? Everybody has this. It can't be coincidental every year. <laughs> yeah. Like at yeah. some point, it has to be by chance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just it, it just happened. That, that's how it was. What can we say? Um. So yeah, uh, front row for Chevy again. Um. We'll. See what happens. And Hendrick Motors, by the way. What did we learn? Oh, yes, yeah. has got a Hendrick power plant. Did we learn anything in the clash, or was it just too much of a, you know, spaghetti fest? I don't think we did. I would say that we learned that these guys are are willing to call each other out, and, and they're starting <laughs> the season at, at red line speed emotionally. I mean, that's always good, isn't it? You know, the, the, the knock on NASCAR is that it's become too corporate, and they don't have anybody to – necessarily fire up the crowd, but Logano is doing a great job of being a wrestling heel just right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't disagree with you about that at all. I, yeah. I mean, (laughs) he made a mess of things, but he made a mess of things trying to win the race. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So William Byron gets an extension from Exalta through 2027. That's a strong, commitment i would say um how do you become a stock car driver uh well it's stuff like that isn't it sherwin <laughs> yeah well i think the money i don't think it should be any surprise to anybody that that exalta would sign back up with hendrick because they actually have a paint booth on the campus at hendrick motorsports like i this is just a formality from my perspective but what it does do is it lets hendrick no, they have some security in a you know sponsorship because it doesn't. They don't just sponsor William Byron. They also sponsor Alex Bowman, and their case. You know, their their side sponsors on all four cars. So, I was call it what you meant. The thing that surprised me, what I, name one other thing in NASCAR that has a seven year commitment right now. <laughs> Like even yeah. the even the existence of the sport, I sure hope is around in seven years. Well, but I, th- I thought it was. It's, it's wild how how yeah far out for me. Sure. Yeah. Well, I thought it was Leslie related to Leslie. Is that a word? <laughs> Less related to Hendrick or, or to um, William Byron as it was to Hendrick Motorsports mm-hmm. and whoever yeah. they decide to put in that car and slap that big old stamp on the side of it. Yeah, that's 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 an excellent point. That's what I was thinking as well. And also, I would like to know what kind of out clause there is in this. You know, uh, I cover the NFL a lot. Whenever you hear a contract, an NFL contract, that a guy gets an eighty-three million dollar contract or something like that, some absurd number, you got to take a little closer look and see 
just how much is guaranteed because a lot of times it's a it's only a, a small fraction of that and they can cut the guy at any time and i wonder if there's something similar at play here where exalta has the the opportunity to move on from byron has the opportunity to move on from hendrick what kind of out clauses there are because i'm i'm imagining that it's not just pushing a ton of money at hendrick and saying do with us whatever you want we trust you you know me and my wife when we got married we wrote our own vows and here's why because the normal vows say in sickness and in health, right? Well, how sick are we talking? You know? <laughs> right. In cases of leprosy, no. Right. In cases of flu, yes. Right, right. Some STD that I don't have, uh, you know, this could be problematic. So it, it feels like this, like, well, how how long are we talking? You know, the out clause sort of stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I feel like the vows that we wrote were all, uh, they all had out clauses <laughs> Well, I think it's just we're like... We're very happily married, ladies and gentlemen. That's, uh, we're very, at, we at very here? positive. There, 12 years of counting. You into your vows? Everything's we're gonna good. We're going to do this after five years, baby. <laughs> yeah, and I can attest to that through personal witness. But I think this is more of Exalta just announcing their continued partnership with Hendrick. Right. Uh, because they have such a great relationship way back from the DuPont, you know, Rainbow Warrior years. Because that's the same company. Mm -hmm. DuPont just finally jettisoned it, which is they normally do when they've when they're done research and design, they jettison the company to bring in something else to do more research. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Exalta has a great partnership with Hendrick and all of his dealerships. And they'll also be painting all of the trucks. You yep. know, there's just there's so much business to business money that's involved in this versus is this a like you know like a stronghold backing of William Byron which I don't think it is not that they shouldn't I just don't think that's what it is I think you bring up a really good point with the B2B stuff that we're seeing so much more of over the last I would say decade than you know at first it was consumer stuff hey buy our oil buy our snickers buy our uh, batteries etc now it's uh, we've talked about it before on the show like I don't know where to get an Exalta <laughs> I mean, I know it's a little bit closer to the consumer side, but like, where do you go buy an Ericsson or a, you know, the, some of these others I, I can't think of right well, now? Well, no, it's, yeah. it, you make a great point because there are very few of these drivers now and teams that have something that you would consider to be a consumer product. I mean, Kyle Busch probably only has the 100% sponsorship by something that you and I could go buy at the store, mm. whether it's M&M's or it's Interstate Batteries or it's a Snickers or Skittles mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, I mean, like Ally with Jimmy Johnson. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't go buy a loan. You can <laughs> sign up for one. And I talked about this with Brandon on Lap Traffic last week, and I said when he had Lowe's, Guess what you can do with Lowe's? You can go buy hammers and weed eaters and lawnmowers <laughs> yeah. and grills and, you know, plumbing stuff and whatever. Like, you can go actually tangibly put your hands on something, walk to a counter, and give your hard-earned money to take that home with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I... I'm trying to think of anybody else. That has well, some. I mean, Kevin Harvick with Bush, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Harvick with Bush, and then, uh, you know, Denny with FedEx. But how many guys have full-season sponsorship with one company? Is it still just Denny with FedEx? Is, is Ally all year long on Jimmy, or, or is that a portion? Yeah, Ally is, is all year with Denny, or uh, sorry, Jimmy. But I think you're right. Denny is the only one that has the one that you, you and I can all go to a FedEx store <laughs> and we can put right. something in a box <laughs> and we can mail it. And that's isn't that, isn't that remarkable though? I mean, I know that we're sounding like three really old dudes now, but, but you know, you think back and you can think back of any old time driver and you have just one sponsor that you just, you just associate with them completely. And now all of a sudden we've got, you know, guys with, with half season sponsorships, quarter season sponsorships, two races, you know, Miller light pulling out of Keselowski's uh, sponsorship so much. That's a heartbreaker. You know, I, and back in the day you could go smoke that guy's cigarette or that guy's cigarette. <laughs> I was going to say, we, we already mentioned Rick Mast once. Cause he's also from Virginia. You know, he drove the skull car. Well, yeah. you know what? Yeah. Russ and I would probably lament the fact that we <laughs> used that product probably more than we should have. <laughs> But you used to be able to go to the gas station and buy it. Right, right. And so I think you brought up a good point too, Sherwin, with like 
ally. Like, maybe I'll open up a bank account. Maybe I'll be aware of it. But, like, if I'm going for a loan or something, I just want whatever the lowest rate is. Uh, you know, like, get somebody to figure that out. I'm not just going, oh, Jimmy Johnson, I'm going to go buy a house with Ally because of Jimmy. So it's it's weird. Uh, not weird to me, but uh, to your point, you're not going to go buy that. Anyway, we've probably beat this one into the ground, but... Um, well, so somebody <laughs> sent something on the on the feed there that made me laugh. It reminded me of that conversation we had with Gordon Burkle about uh -huh. how, you know, Dawsonville was a Budweiser town, but <laughs> Bill, well, he raced for Coors Light. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they would use Coca-Cola cups and they would pour Budweiser in it. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody knew they weren't drinking Coors Light. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, so fourth period here. Uh, Adam Stern reporting that uh, NASCAR president Steve Phelps has effectively confirmed that NASCAR is exploring something completely different. In this case, they, they talked about a street race around a football stadium and, I mean, all kinds of, yeah, I mean, it's some crazy stuff. And Steve Phelps quoted, there are opportunities that we're exploring that might seem radically different. Now, uh, you know, Bowman Gray, baby, things that we are exploring. <laughs> so obviously, you know, they're just talking or whatever. But uh, what kind of what kind of talk could turn into action? And, and would we see any crazy action like we're racing around some uh, football stadium? Jay, what are your thoughts? Uh, I want to see a figure eight race and I want to see a jump. That's all I'm looking for, because that'd be out of the box. OK, both of those. I want to see I want to see that happen. I would love it. I mean, I get so much crap from people, from traditionalists when I when I talk about how I would love to see new uh, and, and, and different and unexplored territories in NASCAR. But that's how the sport has to has to look forward. I mean, just cars going around in circle it drives us all nuts but man you know when, when that's the criticism but that is how so much of America sees this sport and if you could go and throw you know, throw 40 sprint cup cars out there on or cup cars not sprint cup sorry <laughs> throw 40 cup cars out on the streets and uh, and race them around I mean that'd be amazing to see I'm I'm trying to think of of something crazy like that I mean I, that that's about as crazy as I can imagine is getting out there on something that uh, yeah a street course Something like that. Um, you know, you t you talk about jumps, so we do have uh, we do have Watkins Glen, and there's some, <laughs> you know, there's plenty of jumps there. Uh, there's uh, something close to it. I'm I think we saw. Hopping, man, I'm talking full like over a river and stuff. <laughs> I think we saw more wrecks in, in the clash than we would in a figure eight. <laughs> we, so, I, no kidding. So we kind of have our our jumps and our figure eights <laughs> with, with those two. Um, yeah, I so yeah, jump. Um, I, I think I saw it was an indoor rally race where Jimmy Johnson and somebody else were, and there was a jump, and it was uh, Jimmy was just like, This is so cool! I'm like, There's a jump. Well, and he used to do that, right? He used to yeah. race dune buggies and those off road trucks that Haley Diggin used to race. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how the hell you do it, Jay, but <laughs> I, I at least applaud the you know, the, the thought process. <laughs> just what has worked to this point just cannot work any for or any further. I mean, the, the, and you can go and blame NASCAR or you can blame the damn millennials or whatever, whoever you want to blame, but that doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the fact that people are not going to sit still and watch a four hour race any longer. It just, it's, it's not in our viewing habits and it's not in the way that we absorb sports anymore. And to, to pretend and otherwise is to just have your head in the sand. Well, so let me ask you this, Jay, because I know you write for a lot of different sports. You know, the afternoon and the evening college football games on Saturdays in the fall. Yeah. Those last four hours. Yeah. So. And anybody that's not a, a faithful. And, and, and I'm sorry. But let me fin finish your question, please. Oh, no, I, th I think I was done. I just I didn't really have anything to add to that. I just wanted to hear you. <laughs> so college football lasts that long, jackass. What's your problem? It, I think it's because it, I think it has to do with loyalty. I mean, you will watch your own college football team play if they play for nine hours. You know, you will watch uh, a championship game if it lasts, you know, four hours, but you'll complain about it. You know, I remember this year when the when uh, Clemson and LSU were playing, they didn't start the fourth quarter until after 1130 at night. I mean, it was mm. insane how long that game ran and people watched it because it was a championship game. But if it had been anything short of that, no, nah, they're tuning out. And I think that there's a loyalty involved with college sports that's similar to the loyalty 
that was involved with NASCAR, but but NASCAR loyalty is is so much different. You know, when 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 Junior retired, you didn't automatically just go ahead and keep rooting for the '88 car. You know, you had to you had to decide how who you were going to go with. Were you going to go with Chase Elliott? Were you going to switch over to somebody else? Or were you going to leave the sport entirely? You don't necessarily follow the sport regardless of who's there the way that you do with college sports. And I think I'm with you on that. And I think that's one of the things that NASCAR struggles with is the fact that it's not like a, a local affiliation. Like, yeah. you know, Atlanta doesn't have a race driver. Uh, Charlotte doesn't have a race driver. And it's all the point. other cities combined that, you know, whatever. I, I could list them forever. That It's not the same thing. It's the same way it's not like, you know, Rusty and I River Georgia Tech. Or, you know, they're, my dad's a Clemson alum. Or, you know, we have plenty of fans that are Georgia fans. Like, they just don't – it's not the same thing. What what for y'all, and I'll put I'll put everybody on the spot here. What for y'all would be a number one thing to do to get new fans into the sport? What would it be some radical change to to you know hook them with the stadium run or uh, or is that just a um, I don't know just a weird exhibition thing that we do every once in a while? You're up first, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the experience element of it. I mean, you know, you, whether you, you love or you hate Barstool, they have they have taken a different approach to NASCAR where they're not necessarily linked. I mean, they are linked to, to certain drivers, but they make themselves part of the experience and then they sell that experience to their fans. And, and, and in turn, the fans become somewhat more interested in NASCAR. And I think that we, we all know that if you take somebody who's a first-time fan to a NASCAR race, that – hooks them you know if, they, if they're there for the whole experience it's way different from seeing a football game seeing a baseball game it's an entire day it's an investment but it's an investment that pays off now the problem with that is that you can't rely on live audiences to carry you. you've got to have tv audiences as well but uh, i think that that the way to do that is just with continue what they're doing to, to have a, a continued digital presence to make it easier and easier and easier to watch races to keep up with races and to know with what's going on in the sport all week long, not just on, on those uh, three to four hours on Sunday, but all week long. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I, I I think they're doing they're doing right by having all the daily TV shows. They're yeah. doing right by all of the various different journalists are doing podcasts because I think that 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 helps you, you know, set your hooks and grab in and enjoy things that you wouldn't otherwise get to do. I what I question is, you know, okay, if we're going to do something wildly different, where do we do it? And, you know, we're hearing things about Nashville. We're hearing things about Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas, where they run F1. Like, okay, cool. How are we going to do it? And why does it matter to the exact people that you just talked about? Why does it matter to the people – like us, like let's say, you know, you're a Circuit of the Americans fan. That's like being a Texas Longhorns fan. Mm -hmm. Like you don't care about the cars. You're just watching because the race is in your hometown. Or, you know, I don't know that that's the right analogy, but. What do you think, Sherwin? What, what's your number one? I, I this is for new fans, you know. This is for new fans. I think Cup would benefit from adding a couple of more road course races, and I can't tell you where I would do it. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Road of America in Elkhart Lake, it would be cool if that was a companion race, that Xfinity races on Saturday and Cup's race on Sunday, because it's a really cool track. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's been a lot of fun the last few years. I, I don't know if mid Ohio is the right way to go. I know Canada is not the right way to go because it's just too freaking complicated. Mm -hmm. All the visas that have to be worked through. And, and then if it pours down rain, you have to stay an extra day. The visa thing is, is what is the problematic thing about Canada? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, a Seattle build an indoor track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like <laughs> I like that all three of us, so Jay went with the experience. Sherwin, you're going with kind of location. I'm going to throw something else in the mix here that is <laughs> is only impossible if you just say that, uh, well, we can't do that. I feel like if you, if you went for it, you'd figure it out. Imagine, uh, I'm going with manufacturers, and I know that sounds kind of boring, but imagine if tomorrow Mercedes, 
um, McLaren and Tesla all said, we're in NASCAR now. Or Nissan or <laughs> who, whoever, to your point. Um, yeah. and, and now you're talking about uh, European folks getting into this thing. You're talking about the... Hey, what, what's the cool new gadget everybody likes? And oh, I was talking about that, like bringing uh, something like a Tesla thing in there. Uh, obviously, you know that's a that's a electric car. What does that mean for the sport? Uh, doing something or hybrids? I know we've talked hybrids and stuff. Um, I feel like manufacturers can bring a lot of new people in uh, looking at the sport. But well, maybe I'm crazy. Well, maybe no, the, you're not. I mean, think about BMW having a huge footprint. In uh, in the southeast, being over there between Spartanburg and Greenville, and think about Porsche having a huge presence in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, well, you know, maybe we should get outside of the southeast in order to drive some of this interest. But those kind of cars might do that. I mean, that's a good point. Hey, don't forget Kia down in South Georgia. That's right. They're in Lagrange. Yes. <laughs> And they have a V8, by the way. Oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, uh, they don't have a truck yet, but they're probably not far from it. Right, right. Tesla's think, got a truck yeah, coming and, and I think that uh, <laughs> there's, just, there's so many good ideas, and I like all of these. The question is just how much you're going to listen to people who say, that'll never work, that sucks. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, that's it's always that the NASCAR has this worse than almost any other sport, probably almost any other, uh, other sport there is, where you've got such a loud contingent of people who don't want to do it because it, it hasn't been done before. I think the other thing that, uh, you know, we'll, I'll go for the sinful side here, um, opening up all this betting stuff. I mean, look what it did for NFL. Uh, yeah. And that that's not even, you know, quote unquote betting on NFL. That's that's just all that fantasy stuff. You bring in, uh, you know, betting into every stadium and, and or every race, and you bring it into accessibility for folks. You know, um, I, I won't go into the, you know the the addiction part of this stuff. I know it's you know the, the, it's a fine line there, but hey, I think that brings in a lot of eyeballs if you're making prop bets on every other stage, every other caution, blah blah blah. Well, you're paying attention. Yeah, I and mean, I talked about that on on Twitter about all right. I like the bet about this, that, and the other that Vegas has opened up for the Daytona 500. I said, I'm, I'm going to need an, another couple prop bets, though. Like, you need to – it can't just be who's going to win, what manufacturer's going to win. I need a prop bet, mm -hmm. just like you yeah. said. Like, who's – you know, who's going to win the first stage? Who's going to win the second stage? You know, can you pair those things and uh, make yeah. a uh, – lap is the first caution. Make a double bet. Yeah. Like, I'd love to what, see some head-to-head -head bets too, you know. Who's going to who's gonna be – who's going to win – who's going to come in first, uh, Kyle or Joey, you know, things, things like that. I mean, the, the, the options are, are endless if you open yourself up to them. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, it, uh, you've probably seen this, Jay. Atlanta is, is propositioning themselves and already built a schematic – and a, yeah. a business proposition around like a two point something whatever billion dollar casino that's similar to what Kansas has, you know, because Atlanta's been trying to get a casino for ten years. Yeah, yeah, and maybe yeah, that's and, where it ends up getting built. Yeah, it's 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 so tricky to deal with that because it's all on a state by state level, and the states that are already open. Uh, are just are off and running. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's New Jersey and I think West Virginia and Michigan and Illinois. They're they're already just off and running, and there's just such a huge swath of states in the southeast that because of the the politics of the issue, just just won't get near it. Mm -hmm. We'll move on. Fifth period. Forty four year old Kevin Harvick um, announces retirement. Nope, nope. Never mind. I read that wrong. Signs extension through twenty twenty three with SHR. Four more years. Um, Sherwin, uh, well, 2020, 21, 22, and 23. He's signed through yeah, 2021 yeah, so, now. Yeah. yeah, he's through that. Anyway. But he'll be around he's, for a he's minute. He's got four more years, I guess, my yeah. point. Yep. Um, I didn't realize this. 26 of his 49 wins are with SHR. So over half his wins uh, with SHR made the championship race five of six years, like the final four. Yep. Um, you know, and, and he came on and pretty much uh, he, he did his little uh, – I don't know, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it was, uh, video of, hey, here's why I'm, I feel competitive and I'm just going to keep going. And as long as I feel competitive, sounds like he's, he's pretty much saying this is it kind of like a, a four year or four season uh, farewell. But you know, that's, uh, that's a long goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Well, the interesting 
think about it is to to me is that he he will be the oldest driver in a competitive race car since Mark Martin. Because mm-hmm. we just don't see these guys go that long. Because he'll he'll turn forty eight yeah. before that contract is up. Yeah, and. I mean, to me, that's just interesting in and of itself. Jay, the new Masuthala, Methusala of <laughs> NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that kind of took me aback when you said he was 44. But, uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, he's old. He's old. Not, old, <laughs> not as old as me, but he's old. Uh, it's, it's fascinating because so many of those guys that are not in cars, they, they were bounced not of their own volition. You know, Greg Biffle and Matt Kenseth and those guys, I think they still would have raced. But uh, but they got too pricey. A lot of them did. And and I think other guys saw the writing on the wall. You know, Carl Edwards, I would love to know what Carl Edwards saw that made him pull the plug on his career, um, because, you know, he, he seemed to get out right before a lot of, of the, the real cratering happened. And, and Jimmy Johnson, you wonder how much of him getting out is, is seeing the writing on the wall. But clearly Harvick feels confident. It's just it's, it's going to be interesting because. You know, as we go on, there's going to be fewer and fewer of these mega names and a lot more, much more uh, lower cost names that are driving. And Harvick looks like he's going to be with the last man standing. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, I mean, it I think it shocked us all that he would sign another contract. And and again, one for that uh, for that length Um, and even even SHR. So on the other side, SHR. Uh, what are they gaining out of this? Um, you know, they if if you kind of sign him for one year, or Kevin Harvick's gone after one two years or whatever, now you're building up and and you know you got uh, a ride open and and you can build something in, or somebody into that. Now uh, you know, well that one's off limits for four years. You're not you're not starting somebody today. Maybe you maybe close, but uh, you don't really see people four seasons uh, with. SHR in uh, or or a feeder in uh, well, and they don't do a whole lot of like lower level development stuff. At least the way we can tell, they obviously have the Xfinity cars uh, with Chase Briscoe. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I totally with you. I'm totally with you. It's like, all right, obviously they saw that there's a couple things going on. Kevin still races really well. Yeah, and they don't have anybody in the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Uh, uh, Jay had mentioned uh, Carl Edwards, and I said this about Cole Pern probably a month ago, too, uh, whenever, uh, you know, he said he's out. Um, and I was saying, you know, we always tell each other, well, you give me $10 million, you'll never see my happy ass again. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> right. And then we go into all these deep uh, philosophical questions of why these uh, why these sports figures are doing that. And it's like... Hey, they got their $10 million <laughs> or whatever yeah, it is. They're there. So they're there. I mean, yeah, hard to blame. So what can I say? He's, he's got it. And, and he's got a lot of other interests as well. I mean, Harvick is one of those guys that, that when he finally hangs up his steering wheel, he can walk right into a booth. You know, he's, he's already been grooming himself oh, yeah. for that, that he'll be, that he'll be set to go. But yeah, the, it is interesting that the whole pipeline question about how much they're going to, uh, you know, what they're what they'll do next. I mean, obviously, I think they're going to take a, a run at Kyle Larson and see if they can get him in the fold. And and you wonder how long Clint Boyer's got with them. So it's right. going to be, you know, an interesting set of turnarounds uh, here at Stewart Hospital in the next four years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we I've talked about that at length with various friends of mine, both on Twitter and off Twitter via text. And it's like, okay, who's going to be in the forty eight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, like, and I and I said, look, if I, you know, if I'm Rick Hendrick, I'm knocking on Kyle Larson's door, and I'm knocking on Ryan Blaney's door, and I'm gonna have a contract in hand, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pay you this for three years, and do you want Bob's it? your uncle? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Ross Chastain. <laughs> well, that's the other. That's the other thing is, what's Ross gonna do? Because Ross, Ross is probably not gonna last very long in the Xfinity series, because it's obvious that he is really, really good. Mm-hmm. And he's 27. Okay, so he's not old, but he's also not young. Yeah, he's not the 21-year-old. Yeah. So, like, somebody's going to capitalize on him. Yeah. And, you know, he's got a great relationship with Chip, and so does Kyle Larson, by the way. So how long does Kurt Busch race? Mm-hmm. You know, is the one guard. Yeah, he's, he's another one I'm honestly surprised is still around. Right? Yeah. No offense, Kurt. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I honestly think Ross is going to end up in the one, but that's just me being me wanting to talk about racing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I will straight up tell Rick Hendrick right now because I know he's a devoted listener. Whatever you are willing to pay Blaney or Larson, I will race for half that. So <laughs> you just write me that check, and I will take over the forty-eight. I will happily do it. Well, if we're if we're bidding here and undercutting each other, I mean, I, you know, I'll take a firm handshake, and sure, and I'll probably take a, a spit in his face just to <laughs> right. I mean, six pack of beer is what I heard today on a on a uh, a podcast that I thought was hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so recess, let's, uh, let's uh, go around the sporting world here. Uh, Lou Williams of the Atlanta Hawks, since Jay, you're, uh, writing and paying attention to all the, all other sports too. Lou Williams joins LeBron and Kevin Durant as the only producers of 10 40 plus point games before the age of 22 is Lou Williams. All that (laughs) Man, I tell you what, if the Hawks can do anything, I am happy to see it. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 heady company to be in. But, you know, you got to just see if, if that's going to hold up. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to get better for us to really understand whether that stuff matters. Yeah. And and I'll add that the there was a piece of data that I forgot to tell you, Rusty, is that it's 40 points, 10 assists. Okay, yeah. So that's wow. pretty significant as <laughs> yeah. well. Yeah, uh, that dude can shoot from. I mean, once he catches the ball, he can shoot it. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. it doesn't have to be anywhere near the three point line. Well, uh, the the Hawks and the uh, uh, well, I should say the Hawks are making headlines uh, with trades, making headlines with with you know folks like Lou Williams. Uh, at some point, feels like we got to do something. We we got some money there. Um, make something happen. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to look to a guy who's going to take the Hawks all the way, it's going to be Trey Young because he's, you know, he's, he's about six feet tall, but he's just <laughs> astounding. And he's, he's got kids all over Atlanta uh, posting up for three pointers from about uh, 50 feet out. So, yeah, he's he's the guy that I think that, that you want to look to for uh, for Atlanta to, to have any kind of hope going forward. Well, and you got a couple billionaires back in the organization now mm-hmm. <laughs> so i mean we got all the spanks money right go spend right. some spanks money <laughs> there you go um philip rivers not exactly fired by the chargers but not exactly asked to come back again <laughs> right um that's a uh, that's a headline that uh is interesting you know when i think of philip rivers i'm thinking chargers so uh that's gonna be a uh interesting dolphins uh, he's going to end up with the Dolphins. Think so? Well, he moved to Boca Raton oh, with his well. whole with his whole family, which is like seventy eight people. <laughs> yeah. he's got yeah. forty five kids. <laughs> uh, Jay, is that the landing what, zone for <laughs> what I like? Rivers. Is the the theory that that we have been floating amongst ourselves is that Philip Rivers is going to go to the Patriots and Tom Brady is going to go to the Chargers, and then we're going to see once and for all whether Belichick or Brady was more responsible for all of the uh, Patriots' success. Because if Belichick goes and takes Phillip Rivers to the Super Bowl, oh, Tom Brady's going to be furious. Yes. Wow. Well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, the furious part, uh, 100%. <laughs> right, right. And the whole Chargers organization, for that matter. <laughs> uh, bringing it back to racing, uh, Sherwin Haley Deegan, second place finish in ARCA, doing what she needs to do. Yeah, I mean, she did exactly what she needed to do. She gave a great interview. She survived. Uh, She got a little ding here or there, but she didn't mess her car up. And uh, I think that's all anybody would have wanted, especially considering that Arca was not even as big of a crash em up as the Clash was. (laughs) Well, I was going to say, man, that looked a whole lot more like an Arca race than a a cup race. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. The Clash certainly did, that's for sure. And speaking of, Venturini with uh, Michael Self pick up the win uh, with that Sinclair oil paint scheme that, you know, we've grown to love. Yeah, that's two uh, two years in a row with them. Um, it's absolutely awesome paint scheme. Scleam? Paint scheme. <laughs> scheme. Um, and Michael Self obviously is, is, is making a name for himself. Uh, hopefully he'll get a shot, you know, in something a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit higher up, maybe the trucks, maybe Xfinity, who knows? But uh, yeah, good stuff. And finally, we have Valentine's Day coming up. We got a truck race. So um, I already talked about our kooky marriage, um, and my wife sent me a text. Uh, I think three weeks ago, two weeks ago, three weeks, something. And she goes, uh, "It was like, dude, 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 Waffle House." 
puts on a huge Valentine's Day celebration. We talked about Waffle House down the southeast oh, yeah. a few weeks ago. She's like, they deck it out like on the like white tablecloth and and all this uh, you know silly heart stuff. She's like, we need to go to Waffle House. This would be hilarious, dude. And, that's a keeper right there. <laughs> and I and so I call up like six of the local Waffle Houses, Waffle Highs, Ooh, whatever. Waffle High. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they're all booked. I don't know oh. when you're supposed to call them to get it. And I and I was sulking in that. Well, now we gotta like do a regular Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you go to Chick Fil A. I bet Chick Fil A will have have some. You know, there'll be some cow that'll be uh, in, in in lingerie or something serving you some some chicken. Well, I you know I appreciate the bench play with uh, Chick Fil A, but it's just not Waffle House. You know, it's not. It really is not. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. So uh, so I guess I'll just have to watch truck race instead. <laughs> Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, do you have? Uh, uh, I have a coworker, by the way, who who set up. Um, uh, he set it up like a month ago at this nice restaurant and all this mess. He said he got a text today that said the uh, the restaurant is closing down this week. <laughs> And so he's he's screwed. <laughs> well, damn. Yeah, I usually, you know, we used to do the whole uh, the whole wonderful uh, night out and the whole, you know, what you do in your twenties when you're trying to actually pretend like you're a grown up and you're not. You, you, you just get fleeced all the way. You know, they'll they'll mark up the bottle of wine and they'll they'll add an extra five bucks to the appetizers and all that stuff because you're young and you're an idiot and you pay it anyway. But so I have since gotten into uh, into doing cooking and things like that. You know, around the house, do a little, you know, little uh, candlelight, little wine that that you handle yourself that seems to go a lot farther than trying to put your trust in uh, in somebody else at uh, some waiter somewhere and the truck race in on the you know on the background maybe just maybe well, exactly just I mean, if you know, if you hold your phone right you know you put it right there yeah. on your leg you know you can, you can get away with everything perfect uh no i'm with you though actually uh aside from the you know waffle house detour that we tried to take uh we typically just cook something at home and we're like don't buy me stuff i'm <laughs> i have stuff i don't need stuff uh, i mean look around me more jeez there's so much stuff like i don't know <laughs> there, is, more. Take there is stuff next year is uh, on valentine's day and i remember a couple of times it's fallen that way so it's always funny seeing how people scramble around trying to uh, trying to get around that <laughs> right um, brings us to the SPTM questions. Lisa Chinana had one earlier, but now she has one for you, Jay. Jay, did anyone respond yet to the 65 Mustang that your dad uh, had tweeted out? If so, does your brother realize that you plan on trading him for it? Uh, yeah, screw him, man. Uh, <laughs> the backstory is here. My dad had this old 65 Mustang, and he, I put a picture of this up on Twitter a week or so ago, and he, he sent it out to us. And this is the, uh, the, the Mustang that he had to sell when my brother came along, my younger brother, because apparently they could fit one car seat in it, but they couldn't fit two. I mean, I don't know what a car seat was like when I was a kid. It was probably just like a, a milk carton with a with a little seat belt across it. But they apparently couldn't fit two, so they had to sell the Mustang, and it broke my heart because I love this thing. So I I, I don't know. I, I wonder if I can start, find it by the VIN number. I was kind of being I was kind of oh, yeah. being I was joking obviously about trading my brother for the car, but I was not entirely joking about trying to find that car. <laughs> um, that brings us lastly to uh, Cody Douglas. I should have put this up a little bit higher, but Cody, thanks for sending in the uh, question there at Bobby Finfan, P H I N P H A N. Um, why is it so hard for Jeffrey Earnhardt to get his sponsor dollars and a top ride? Seems like he did pretty well in the 18 last year. Sherwin, what do you think? He doesn't have a backer. Yeah. And he hasn't performed to the point where someone would be like, yeah, I'll take a flyer on that. I was going to say something similar in that it feels like there's baggage there with uh, not, uh, you know, had decent performance last year. There's a lot of years before that. You know, we uh, you almost have to see this. He needed to win in that 18 car. Yeah. Yeah. And how old is he now? Jeffrey's 26, 27. I okay. Say. So he's uh, he's plenty young. Yeah, he's not is he old. That young? Oh, 30. He's yeah, 30. So I felt yep. like he was older than that. Yeah. Well, I mean, not not too bad, but he's not like 46 or something. That, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, no, such only... a, that's such a tough thing, though. You know, carrying that name around, it's it's a curse. You know, if you're not performing up to the level, it can certainly help you at a certain level. But, man, it's got to be a burden. And, and the days when people would say, ah, he's an Earnhardt, we'll do a favor for him. Those days are long gone. You got you got people running the business now who have no interest in in name value alone, no interest in tradition. They're they're interested in results, and and he hasn't delivered. Yeah, well, and 
that, that's a great point. I don't know that I could say it any better than that. But the thing is, Jeffrey hasn't won all along the way. Mm-hmm. Like the difference between Jeffrey and Dale Jr. is that Dale Jr. won all along the way. So while people will continue to discount what his success was and how much it matters, he won in everything that he got in. Jeffrey, not so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, it's not like he finished in the top 20 or anything like that either. So, you know, uh, hard to say. He's, I mean, he's got a, he's trying to do it the Corey LaJoy way, but he has a different name than Corey LaJoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, even LaJoy is a legacy. Like, his dad was a, you know, a Bush champion. Right. But, you know, it's still a different thing because Jeffrey's just not winning. He didn't win stuff. You got to win stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That brings us, Sherwin, to something that I've been waiting to do all off season, and that's to gas it up. <laughs> There's that. Boy, it's been a while since we heard that one, huh? It's been a hot minute. Right? Um, but we have an actual real race this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. On our hands. We have a full slate. We've got Thursday night racing, Friday night racing, Saturday afternoon racing, and Sunday afternoon racing. Woo, doggy. Look out. Yeah. Um, All right. Where's Billy Packer? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Nelly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right? Um, we got to do some picks. <laughs> Not Billy Packer. Who was I thinking of? Chris, uh, Keith Jackson. Jackson. Pete Jackson. Keith, there you go. Keith or, Jackson. Yeah, Pete. Keith Jackson. <laughs> If I can get it out. One minute. No offense, Keith. Sorry. Rest in peace, brother. (laughs) All right, Jay. That's our that's our sound for the picks. Uh, Who you got this weekend and the Daytona 500? Man, uh, you know what? It's it's so hard to pick this race, and I'm saying this because I'm kind of stalling. But I'm going to go with Keselowski. I think that Keselowski knows how to win at super speedways. I think he knows how to get around the track. Yeah, he's he's got a new crew chief, so that's going to make things a little bit dicier for him. But he's one of those guys where if if it's a race of strategy, if it's a chess match in those final 50 laps, he's one of the guys who knows how to set the pieces on the board uh, to favor himself. So I'm going with him in the two car. Everything that you just said, everything is exactly why I'm picking Joey Logano. (laughs) Yeah. If you just rinse, repeat your exact comments, except there's another two on the end of that car uh, number. Uh, is is exactly uh, I, I can't say it any better for the guy that I'm picking. So I'm going with Joey, um, strong at plate races, uh, chess match, new uh, crew chief. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there you go, uh, Sherwin. It's on you. Well, I don't see any reason why not to start off the year being an absolute <laughs> friggin' homer. <laughs> So, I think you've got some mo on this though. I'm I'm picking Dawsonville's, you know, grandson, so to speak. I don't. I, I I got Chase Elliott on this one. I feel like it's less of a uh, hail mary this year. I, although you know, it's it's what we were talking about before. What's Chevy bringing? Um, we know they brought the pole, which they do a lot. But uh, you know, what else are they bringing uh, to the show here? So it's um, about not wrecking in this deal. Yeah, um, and and in the clash, I, I, it was hard to see what you know what Chase had. Oh, really. he was poised to win until that nonsense happened at the end. Right, right. So, um, so yeah, he knows what he's doing now, y'all. This has been extra special to be able to do some picks again. Uh, it's it's one of my favorite parts of the show, uh, and and you know I've been just trying to scratch at it for uh, what three months, uh, two months, whatever it is. So, um, with that, we're gonna close it down, Jay. Tell the folks where they can find you. Thank you so much for being on. And, uh, and yeah, close us out here. Absolutely. You can find me at Yahoo Sports, bitch. Uh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> uh, Twitter's always the best way. I'm always on Twitter. J-A-Y-B-U-S-B-E. Find me there. Say hi. Holler at me. Whatever you like. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're at Yahoo all the time. And uh, not, not necessarily doing NASCAR all the time, but certainly uh, always willing to talk NASCAR. So, yes, I love the sport. Awesome. Well, the the PTM PhD uh, is in the mail right there with the check that we send for all of our guests being on the show. So uh, (laughs) thank you, sir, for joining us once again. (laughs) Sherwin, start closing this thing down. Y'all know where to find us. Uh, PTMPodcast.com at PTMPodcast on the Twitter handle. We're going to bring y'all something next week. uh, Daytona 500 postgame deal. Uh, Can't wait to 
sit here and talk NASCAR some more. Sherwin. Yep. You can find me, uh, Andrew Sherwin, at Pregame Engineer, Andrew L. Sherwin on Instagram. And uh, you can come grab a beer with me uh, in Roswell, Georgia, and we might just be able to see Jay in person. That's you never right. know. That's right. Uh, Till next time, we'll see y'all. Have a good Daytona 500. off air now that is a wrap <laughs> well we're on youtube we're still on youtube <laughs> yep yep so, so tubers can hang out with us yeah, uh, and while i kind of do some it stuff here make sure this thing gets exported before you know something crazy happens and i lose the whole freaking thing <laughs> jay you still with us i'm still here boys all right jay's there my man cool uh that was awesome man thanks a lot yeah man thanks for having me i do, I do appreciate it uh, it's always fun um it's fun to get a perspective that's not completely delved into nascar but <laughs> knows you know understands what the sport is like yeah that's it that's that's a nice way of saying yeah you're not quite up on what's going on but uh no i try to keep uh keep abreast of the big picture developments and i and i love it you know i love i love the sport so i would love to see it succeed it's just uh man there's some headwinds yeah no and and that was certainly no shot at you uh Oh, I know. I'm kidding with you. I just I know you're a fan, and and it's cool. And I know that you, you do a lot of different writing for other sports. And if we had more time, we would probably find another sport to talk about other than <laughs> just some no uh, Atlanta Hawks basketball. But uh, you know, we we certainly I, I appreciate how responsive you are, and and you know how often you've been willing to say yes to to doing this thing and. It, it continues to humble us every time that somebody like you is willing to spend an hour of their time with us, you know, talking nonsense. Oh, you're very kind. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Let me know when it's live and I'll uh, throw up a link to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it will be live in the next 15 minutes. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, well, depending good. on my upload yeah. speed, but we'll Easy see. Easy enough. Yeah. Good deal. <laughs> That sounds like a Ron White or a uh, Bill Ingvall yeah, job. Yeah, hell I'll yeah. be over here. Maybe over here. <laughs> hell, you'll see me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll get it tweeted well, out, and you'll be uh, you'll be tagged in it. So you'll see. Perfect. It. Perfect. Well, thanks again, guys. I do appreciate it. Right on, man. Thanks, right Jay. On. Love hanging out. Appreciate we'll it a bunch. Soon. We'll catch you later. Right. Bye. Be good. See ya. Awesome. Ooh. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh, I didn't change the uh, episode number. All right, everybody watch... Uh, Live while Rusty edits. <laughs> what is that? That'll happen February sometimes. February tenth, twenty twenty. There we oh, go. Oh, that was hey, like January twenty eighth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops, that was the last time we did a show. Crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, there it just changed. That's yep. pretty cool. Yep. Uh, you know, I can I can do it on the fly. <laughs> um, yeah. Last week, y'all. <laughs> oh, Rusty gets a uh, gets called in the boss's office and is asked to fly uh for work in six hours from then <laughs> so you know that means it's important and so uh you know it's one of those well if the company thinks it's that important then i probably ought to make this happen texted <laughs> sherwin i was like uh dude uh i don't know what to say we got a problem yep uh, <laughs> i don't know what to tell you so um yep we're thankfully uh brandon crowd from lap traffic uh bailed us out in some respect because i got to do an hour on his show yeah which if you haven't listened to that go back and and grab that uh lap traffic is in all the same places that we are um oh and when i was on the plane um before we took off i, I was like oh i gotta download the episode but the thing wouldn't work so i still hadn't listened to it so i gotta go back and listen still. it's not bad i mean <laughs> granted I got self-interest in right. <laughs> providing that feedback, but uh, yeah, it was good. Um, he also had Tyler Reddick and oh, cool. uh, and Aaron. Um, last name eludes me right now. The uh, the weather guy, Studwell. Studwell. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. 
so which is always good. And uh, I think he pretty much nailed the the Daytona forecast. <laughs> we we saw all the races that we wanted to see without any interruptions. Oh yeah. Which I mean, he certainly doesn't control whether or not it rains, but he was right that it wasn't going to. You know, it uh, we're having floods here. I don't know about where everybody else is at, but um Today was like day one of the great flood of 2020 in Atlanta. Evidently, do you hear? Uh, do you see all that, Sherwin? I mean, we're we're like oh, all the rivers are flowing down into the city. Yeah, yeah, it's a well, uh, we had, uh, it's a so, mess out there. Yeah, I mean, obviously we had the snow that I don't think y'all got much of, but we got some down here. It was it was wild and crazy for a bit. Yeah, it was like well, thank goodness this didn't. Happen. Oh yeah, well I I. Certainly haven't told this on the on the podcast, but uh, you know I left the house about t- quarter to eleven, mm-hmm. thinking I might be snowed in mm-hmm. for Saturday, and I did not have some some very necessary supplies. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was fresh out of the necessary supplies, as it turns out, and <laughs> I had a very wild ride up the hill. <laughs> i mean it oh, was man. like throttle a little bit turn a little bit e-brake a little bit throttle a little bit you know like yeah, it was yeah it was a slow climb <laughs> well my wife was going she's in chicago right now for a conference and uh and she was like can you take me to the airport and i look outside and i'm like in this <laughs> i mean it was coming down the snow was we had those like it was it was more like somebody had just dropped snow because it was giant chunks that we oh had. yeah they were huge it big flakes weird. when i woke up and like i don't know nine nine thirty yeah that was like and i looked outside and i go because i had totally called the bluff on the forecast i was like mm. there ain't no way we're getting snow that ain't <laughs> happening and then like honks of snow are coming honks down. is a good way to put it we had and i'm like what is this nonsense <laughs> And then I wandered around the house for a while, probably listened to somebody's podcast, and I go, I ain't... There's not enough booze in here to get me going. I don't have any <laughs> wine. I don't have any fireball. <laughs> and there's, like, racing today, and, like, I don't know what's next. And I, I was supposed to go to a party that night, which I did go to. And, uh, and I was like... And I didn't realize... I, I hadn't paid enough attention to the forecast to realize it was all going to melt. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I ended up leaving the house again at like two 30, but I went out at 10 30 <laughs> and it was like, I was like, well, we're just going to see. And it really was more of a, one of those machismo things. Of mm-hmm. Like, I wonder if I can do this. And like, I'm getting like halfway up that hill, like the steepest part. And like the car's starting to act like it wants to go backwards. And I'm like, nope, that's not happening. <laughs> so I like turn it over here and turn it over there and st- you know, made sure I didn't like stomp the throttle because that's like the worst thing you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, just try to t- stay easy in the throttle. And uh, I worked my way up the hill, and there was a guy coming down the hill, and I was like in his lane. I'm oh like, boy! Well, I got to get over to the other lane. <laughs> and he's probably figuring out by now that I'm like wandering all over the track, Cole. Well, son of a bitch just slammed into me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't bump you; he nudged you. <laughs> Or rubbed you and rubbing sun's racing, but uh, I I wish I had a, had the foresight to take pictures then, mm-hmm. or at least video me and like so people could see how like the picture window of the windshield changed when I was like not going straight, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't. Uh, I just laughed the whole time, as yeah. one would do, <laughs> as one would do. And uh, and I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, we're gonna shut this thing down. It's uh, it's been fun. I hope y'all have enjoyed it as well. Um, what can I say? Daytona 500, dude. Woo! Redneck noise. Awesome. See y'all later. Peace.